Hey everyone, uh, welcome to this interview with one of uh, the US's uh, you know, best startup community leaders, uh, Hauk from Launch House. Hauk is joining us from New York, but they're also um, you know, massive down here in LA as well, where I am today. Uh, Launch House um, is here to connect, build and grow with the most ambitious founders and investors. Uh, it's a professional club that helps great people achieve success and fulfillment. So welcome, Hauk. Yeah, hey, Jason, thanks for having me. Super stoked for this. Um, and you know, happy to talk about Launch House. We can go super deep and uh, cover anything you want to chat about, so far away. I'm really excited. Um, you know, as many of you know, uh, Cake's passionate about helping founders and early stage startups to hack through the first phase as successfully and quickly as possible. And we aim to bring together the best minds and platforms and resources we can. And we're big fans of accelerators and communities that are aligned to this. So this is a really excellent opportunity uh, to get to know Hauk and Launch House and how they're helping uh, to build uh, the US tech scene um, and, and how you can get involved to be part of one of the best startup platforms in the world, it looks like, from the outside. <laughs> I'm really excited to learn more. Um, you know, and Cake has a tremendous global community too, especially in Australia. And, you know, right now we're really focused on LA and Denver. So, you know, we're really here to help you understand how and why to get involved um, with Launch House and, and the LA and New York ecosystems in general. So, so how, look, thanks for joining. Um, your LinkedIn is like mega impressive. You've got Uber <laughs> on there, Airbnb, first round, some amazing names that, I'm sure many of us would would love to have, um, it, you know, on our track records. Um, tell us a, a bit about what led you to to starting Launch House. Yeah, so I had been at Airbnb for about a year and a half. I was a product manager on Airbnb Plus. Uh, had built that you know, part of that business up uh, during that time, and we were going into people's homes, and you couldn't do that in April 2020, and so the project <laughs> <laughs> project got shut down. Uh, whole team was laid off. I was looking for something new and I was, you know, what I realized was that like, you know, the the way that startups are created is changing forever. The pandemic made remote work the norm all of a sudden. Uh, and also new formats like podcasts, newsletters, TikTok, Twitter, uh, and YouTube and more uh, were making the information kind of behind how to create a successful startup more accessible to anyone, anywhere, at any time than had ever been the case before. And so the kind of the insight behind Launch House originally was that like, now that that can happen anywhere and, you know, there wasn't this ivory tower in San Francisco and the Bay Area, um, there needed to be a place for an institution for the people building to tomorrow's biggest companies to gather and to share ideas and to you know, give each other feedback and learn from each other. Um, and so that's kind of what led us to start Launch House um, and do a co-living house even during the, the pandemic. I can't tell you how, you know, aligned that is to our understanding of, of our journey. So we're from a, you know, kind of a medium-sized city in Australia, the Gold Coast, you know, but we were able to access Startmate, which is, you know, the leading accelerator in Australia. It's a whole platform now as well. And they had to go from physical accelerator, you know, backed by Blackbird to, you know, quite a digital platform during that period. And that created an opportunity for Cake on the Gold Coast to be able to connect into the best minds and the best experiences and resources. And without that, you know, it's quite probable that we would have, we'd be far behind where we are today. So, you know, I'm a, I'm a huge, huge believer in, in you know, education platforms and, and getting these communities together so so founders can learn from the best. So, yeah, super, um, super pumped with what you're doing. That, that's really cool. Um, it, it's funny you say that because we, that's the same, the same opportunity we saw with Y Combinator, right? Y Combinator went digital during the pandemic. And so we went IRL. We were like, there's a, there's a gap there. So same, <laughs> similar, similar background, similar story. Well, it's that combination of uh, in real life and digital, I think, where we're all sort of are, are loving it at the moment as well. You know, like I think a lot of the best workplaces are going that way. And I'm going to jump into something else that I saw mega interesting, um, you know, in, in the launch house's history and obviously a great achievement for yourself. But you, you've got uh, A16Z. Uh, we would say in Australia. <laughs> um, 
you've got those guys uh, backing you. How how exciting! Tell us tell us a bit about that. Yeah, they they've been fantastic partners. Andrew Andrew Chen uh, led their investment uh, into us. Uh, you know, last about a year ago, um, and they they've been great partners. They've been you know able to let founders build, but at the same time, they've had a great network uh, to help us solve the difficult problems uh, that any startup faces. And uh, we're very fortunate to have them in our in our corner. Um, you know, kind of came about because Andrew was moving to LA. He heard about Launch House happening in LA uh, and he <laughs> he came by, we did an event. He spoke to the cohort and some other folks who were there. And his comment to us was basically that like, you know, this is the same energy that YC had 10 years ago, right? Uh, small batches, uh, intimate relationships, serendipity, uh, and just like an electric atmosphere. And so uh, when that happened, you know, we kept talking with him for a couple months. Um, and actually, <laughs> actually on my wedding day, um, I was <laughs> on the tarmac about to fly to my honeymoon that night with my wife. My co-founder calls me and he's like, hey, Andrew wants to invest and we'll do a Series A. And I was like, no way. Yeah, this day <laughs> of my life. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's epic. That's epic. I was going to ask, you know, what what would be your, you know, top bit of advice, uh, you know, for getting a heavyweight to invest? I mean, sounds like there, there's a little bit of an X factor, you know, just like hitting the sweet spot when it comes to, I guess, a trend and a theme and, and creating a lot of energy. And, and, you know, that's something that I've just picked up from what you said. But what would you sort of say, you know, would be the top couple of things that you think might might be able to help founders out there? Yeah, I think founders often make the mistake of like feeling like they have to convince an investor that they're onto something when really you know, investors are constantly looking at the market. They're looking at data, they're looking at qualitative signals, they're looking at trends. They have you know very connected friends who give them information as well. And so they kind of have a pulse on things. And really the founder's job is to you know find the investors who already believe in the theses that can be applied to their business, right? And so we found Andrew who was leaving SF, he was moving to LA. He was a big advocate of this like new distributed, decentralized, whatever you want to call it, Silicon Valley. I'm saying that, and yeah. Yeah. He saw, yeah, he saw Launch House as like a perfect vessel for that. Um, They're getting on their Twitter, getting on their LinkedIn, finding people <laughs> that like look at your niche and not stalking them too much, but just checking like where is their energy um, how are they seeing the world and then and then you know trying to find that alignment that's awesome the, the reason the reason that investors are on twitter or go on podcasts or write a newsletter is to advertise the trends that they're excited about so that the right startups approach them and so as a founder you know it's your job to research and, and identify who those people are that's one of the best answers and advice i've ever heard <laughs> for founders <laughs> To find investors um, and get funding. Wow, cracking job, mate. Well done, well done. All right. <laughs> so let's get on to Launch House. Um, you know, from the outside looking in, just looks so interesting and so vibrant. And, you know, there's a lot going on. I can see that you're a startup too and you're evolving all the time. And, you know, that's exciting, exciting to see. So firstly, you know, why should founders choose Launch House, you know, as their base? Um you know, I guess you've got a couple of different locations. Maybe specifically, we could start with the LA because I'm sort of quite focused on LA, you know, myself and, and with Cake at the moment. So, you know, why should founders choose, um, you know, the LA launch house as their base? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, we like to say that we've imported more founders to LA than <laughs> than any other ecosystem, community, whatever it might be. I'm going to try and bring them with me as well. <laughs> 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 no, yeah, it's true. Like the most permanent residents, they come to do our co-living experience. They build deep local connections with the startup scene, with the investors who are now increasingly based in LA. Um, and they put down roots to grow their startup. You know, some people do it for the industry, specifically like creator economy, entertainment, gaming, things like that. But uh, others do it just because, you know, the LA ecosystem is growing really fast and Launch House is an outpost within it where a lot of people just naturally gravitate towards. And, you know, we throw a lot of events that help, uh, help keep that going. Awesome. And so with cake as, as an example, you know, we're a sort of series A ish stage 
Australian, you know, historically Australian company, we're expanding globally, we're focused on LA, you know, what sort of opportunities would, would launch house afford a company of our, of our stage or, or are we a little bit too far along or what sort of, <laughs> what sort of considerations should, you know, should we be taking into account as an example, just to help people understand, you know, what the opportunities are. Yeah, totally. I mean, we have a wide variety of founders who join the community. I would definitely say that, um, that, you know, we probably skew a little bit earlier than series A. Most people precede seed stage, uh, but we've had people raise a series A from our house during a cohort. And we've wow. had That'd series be cool. B. <laughs> yeah, it was incredible. The whole community kind of gathers around and helps them refine their pitch and their billion dollar vision and all this stuff. We do like masterminds and anyway, um, yeah, we have series B companies in the community as well. Um, you know, really it's for connecting with like-minded founders, right? And who you can learn from. And so what we do is try to intentionally group founders with others at the same stage as them. So uh, we do these sessions called squads. Squads are basically your innermost circle of the community for you individually. They're a handpicked group of other members who you meet with once a month to hold each other accountable, to share wins, to brainstorm. Um, and, you know, they're all at the same stage. So you guys can kind of um, can kind of uh, learn from each other. Yeah, a few questions there to unpack for sure. Um, maybe we could just quickly cover international applications are totally fine as long as they're, <laughs> yeah, you're cool with that, right? Encouraged. Encouraged. Yeah. yeah, we have yeah. Just some have cohorts are even 60 or 70% international. Just yeah. ticking that off, just ticking it off. All right. So, okay, now we're, we're getting all these international applicants coming in. You know, Aussie founders are coming up. You've got LA and New York. And is that it so far? We do events in other cities and we've done pop-up houses in Lisbon, Miami, Austin, um, and Aspen actually too. Um, <laughs> I was just in Vail, so maybe try there another time. <laughs> <laughs> maybe this year we'll do the Vailski house instead. Um, cool. Great snow up there. Yeah, we've got an office in Lisbon as well, so we'll have to keep an eye out to see if that happens again. All right, so we've got multiple locations. We've got pop-ups. We've got sort of LA and New York as the two big cities. So we're coming in. We're choosing whatever city potentially is going to work for us. Now, what type of memberships can people engage with? What types of programs can they engage with? Because it looks like there's different levels and, um, yeah, there's quite a range of cool opportunities for founders, yeah? Yeah, I mean, we've experimented with a lot of things. You know, we're still a startup ourselves. We're about a little bit over two years old at this point. Uh, today, what we offer is a single membership uh, for everybody who wants to join the community. Oh, right. uh, it's, an, it's an annual membership. Uh, and, you know, you get access to programs after you become a member. Uh, some of those are you know, co-living residencies like we've historically done and got started with. Others are digital programs uh, taught by industry experts. You know, we've had partners from Andreessen and Sequoia come in to teach digital courses to our members. We've had Twitter experts come in to teach you how to grow your startup and meet investors through Twitter. Um, and then the more like intimate circle squad type programs um, focused on like, you know, intimate connection, personal bonding and, and things like that. So um, we try to strike the balance between professional growth and personal growth. Um, and the co-living residencies are just like one part of what we offer. Um, last thing I'll say there is that we, uh, we also do just a ton of events. So if you're coming to a new city and there are launch house members there, you, know, you can always seek them out, get together, host an event. Um, and you, we're always hosting ones ourselves in LA and, uh, and New York. Amazing. So yeah, I'm learning fast. Um, <laughs> I, I did think it was a little bit more evolved around the, the you know, I guess the in-house, but I suppose those numbers are so small and you're trying to have a huge impact. So the digital platform allows you to have so much bigger impact and gives people all over the world access to you know, these great resources. So yeah, that totally makes sense. Sorry, I was a bit slow on the uptake there. Oh, you're fine, you're fine. <laughs> cool. we, so we, we probably need to do a better job advertising it ourselves. So no worries. <laughs> uh, silly. I'm sure it's me. I'm sure it's me. Um, yeah, so Aussie founders, you know, they want to connect into the, you know, the best resources and, and advisors and mentors and, and you know, be part of a global community, um, you know, with a strong American, I suppose, um, slant to it you know, this is a great opportunity for them, um, you know, to be able to do that, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, love the idea of having more Aussie founders join the community, integrate with our existing, um, you know, 
American community, international community, um, and you know, get to tap into our network, right? Everyone in the community, we look at whether they're going to add value back to it by opening their network, being collaborative with other members, um, right. top of ourselves. So yeah. Right. Yeah. I hope that the Australian ecosystem is well known for a giving first and, you know, really being good community members. I know in Queensland, the state where we're based, you know, we're absolutely wonderful at that. And so I really hope everybody puts their best foot forward when they <laughs> go and join these international communities. So, you know, we'll do when our I, best. <laughs> when I came down to, uh, I spent like a week in Sydney and then another in, in Melbourne, um, like two years ago. I, I was so I was so welcomed into the various startup communities that were there, even just for a short time. So um, I'm I'm sure nothing nothing less would be true. Yeah, totally. Um, all right. So what's going on with the startups at the moment? You said you've got a um, like a house going now, and then maybe going to have a switch over. And you know, like in this sort of end of 2022, how do you see some of the, the better successes? Or is there anything you can share? You know, coming from the community that, that you know we can highlight or, or promote as successes from the community. Yeah, we actually just recently had a community company get acquired, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, oh, we love exits at Cake. That's a big part of what we're trying to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're called they're called Fanfix. Uh, started by these you know two community members in LA. Uh, they took it from literally nothing to compete straight up against Patreon, uh, and were able to were able to take it to an exit uh, just in in just under two years. So, uh, wow. really incredible job by them. Yeah, that's that's amazing. Um, all right, we're just going to shift a little bit now over to the the content side of things. Um, you know, you're you've got a couple of newsletters. I think it's really worthwhile highlighting um, these newsletters to people. I've signed up to them both, and I'm following you on <laughs> LinkedIn. And I'm already starting to get the benefit of, you know, all, all this great content. I saw um, just the last couple of days you pulled together some great info from Y Combinator on um, on a bunch of their top tips. Um, so great to be able to capture, you know, all that quality information very quickly and in the one place um something that we're quite passionate about at Kate, because sometimes you can just get lost all over the internet reading every bloody thing and you know you really just want to know the best bit so you can get get your startup <laughs> going really quickly um so yeah so if you want to just tell the crew about um the half newsletter and i think we've got home screen as well by launch house yeah so home screen is our is our you know flagship newsletter for the launch house community uh, we've got 20,000 subscribers to that now. It's grown like crazy this year. Uh, it's a three times per week newsletter. It's Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, gets delivered to your inbox every every morning. Uh, and it's just it's basically morning brew for the startup world. So we cover trends, news, uh, new VC funds that have recently raised you know additional capital and are looking to deploy. We highlight them every week. Um, and it's kind of written with like a kind of quirky, funny voice behind it, uh, which, which really like, um, and then my personal newsletter is just called Hawks newsletter. Um, and, uh, you know, I go deep on various topics about startups, fundraising growth. Um, that one's just gotten started about two months ago, but we're already at 6,000 subscribers on that one. So, um, yeah, I mean, you can find home screen at, I think it's just uh, uh, home screen or launchhouse.com slash home screen. And you can find mine at hauk.news. Amazing. Thanks for sharing. I highly recommend both of those. So go go sign up to them to get some, some <laughs> great news. So just change topic a little bit into an area that at Cake, obviously, we're very passionate about, which is employee equity. Um, so how are you tackling it at Launch House? Is it um, part of your, you know, remote hiring and cultural elements uh, within within the company? Yeah, I mean, employee equity is super important. You want to make sure that, you know, employees, especially early employees who are making a huge commitment and taking a huge risk to bet on your startup versus, you know, one of the many other things they could do with all their skills um, are, are compensated for that and have the upside for that in the long run. Um, and so, yeah, we have an employee option pool um, as part of our uh, part of our equity structure. The company uh, it's ten percent, which we recommend is like you know to be pretty standard. Um, and every time we raise capital, we'll like replenish that to bring it back up to ten percent available. Um, and yeah, I mean we have a remote team. We do have IRL employees in New York and LA, uh, but you know a good portion of our team is remote uh, and also international. We have. Uh, we have employees in in Mexico today, 
uh, and we've also uh, had and Canada as well. I've also had employees in Ireland uh, in the past as well. So yeah, super important. You want to make sure that your incentives are aligned. You want to make sure that everyone's bought into the future vision of the company. Um, and as a founder, you want to make sure that people are going to you know be in it for the long haul and stick around and um, you know are in it for something more than just the the paycheck. So uh, super important, a hundred percent. Yeah, we love that. You know, we sort of see, you know, the best people are attracted by having some skin in the game. So you're going to have a better quality team from the starting point. They're going to be more engaged, as, you know, is the principle, right? And then there's also that retention element, which you know, I think that's potentially the greatest element because especially in those first few years when you're finding product market fit and your brand's growing and your product's improving, so much of the IP is within those <laughs> That those people's brains um, and, then, and their networks that they build. So you really want to keep them, you know. So do you have things like, uh, you know, 12-month clear for the investing period? Is that sort of how, how you would run it? Yeah. And I mean, Jason, to your to your point, you know, you want you want missionaries, not mercenaries, right? Totally. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, so we structure it four-year vesting with a one-year cliff. Um, you know, after the one year, you get a quarter of your equity and then it's monthly vesting after that, uh, 148th of the rest per month. Uh, we find this to be pretty standard. This is what we recommend to community companies to do uh, because it is you know, relatively industry standard in, um, at least in the US, I'm not sure in Australia, but in the, in the US, uh, you know, people don't blink an eye uh, when you kind of share that that's the structure, which is nice. Yeah. Um, one thing we also do, uh, most early employees, you know, have to uh, take a huge risk on options, right? And so if they leave the company, most companies, most startups ask them to exercise those options and pay for them within 30 to 90 days. Uh, but Launch House actually gives people uh, seven years uh, to pay for them. Uh, this gives considerable financial flexibility to the employee um, and just kind of sets the relationship off right in our opinion. I absolutely love that. That is amazing. <laughs> no, that's my biggest issue with the U.S., stock option plans is that, you know, for whatever reason, on, under great terms, after three or four years of hard work, the employee has to, you know, stomp up a big wad of cash that they may or may not have. And I'm not trying to hassle anyone. I know everyone's doing their best, <laughs> but that's a huge, huge risk. And they've already kind of earned them. And and I just love long exercise periods. And again, I'm happy for people to run things how they do. In Australia, we have unlimited and that, that's what we recommend as the standard. And um, but you know, as, as long as possible, give the team member a bit of time to to understand, you know, what the outcome's going to be. And I think you kind of want the ideally you want the exercise outcome to be as close as the exit as possible because then you've got the exit, you've got the cash to be able to make the payment for the exercise, and then everybody's kind of winning at the same moment. And that, that's I think the best, the best way to do that. <laughs> The only other comment I would say is that I think in Australia, it's kind of 12 months um, cliff with three year vesting, but I think people are starting to lengthen that out a little bit towards four years, which is kind of based on the, the US lead. And I think more and more globally, we're all trying to become a little bit more of a, a global ecosystem when it comes to how these things work. And it's nice to see those best practices um, coming through from the US um, out into the rest of the world as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, when you're an early stage employee to start up, you're taking a pay cut to be there, right? You're taking lower cash comp to, to be part of something from the ground floor. And so expecting those same people who are taking the pay cut to have the cash to exercise those options right away, just getting back to what we were talking about. Yeah, you know, it's just, it's not realistic. And I think it sets people up for tough conversations that are unnecessary. And then missing out on that big win, potentially um, <laughs> something that, you know, the exercise may be a bit unnecessary. Anyway, I don't want to, I don't want to call <laughs> problems, but I, I really like that. Thanks, man. All right. Well, look, you've been very generous with your time and you've provided some really unique and powerful insights, being one of the best chats I've had. Um, so look, thank you, Howard, for joining. Um, thanks for creating Launch House. I hope people have understood um, why to get involved, how to get involved. Uh, I highly recommend you do get involved. And we're really looking forward to, you know, continuing to build um, our community together and hopefully we can continue to partner on some stuff in the future. Yeah, Jason, same here. Thanks so much for having me. This was a lot of fun, to be honest, and uh, looking forward to partnering with you guys even more, maybe for some events. Um, and yeah, anyone who's interested, you can drop an application at launchhouse.com. Uh, we have rolling applications all year round. 
Awesome. Thanks, man. See you, everyone. See you, man.